everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today I want to do a true story or I guess I would call the new series Whatever Happened To. So I want to look at different people who were in Guns N' Roses circles back in the day and kind of ask the question, whatever happened to that person? So today, and this is sort of the first episode, is Axel's former flame Stephanie Seymour. Now I'm not going to get into the whole relationship stuff, but I want to talk about what happened after 1993 after they broke up and where she is today. So in 1993 and early 93 around February from the reports I've read they broke up and they had a whole lawsuit uh, back and forth with each other. Um, Axel sued her, she sued Axel and eventually in 1995 Axel would end up settling out of court for uh, somewhere in the order of a million dollars which was a lot of money and in some respects I think unfair to Axel. So in 1995 Slash was doing a lot of interviews for his first uh, side project Slash a Snake Pit and he was asked about Stephanie Seymour a couple times and he really went to bat for Axel in those interviews. Here's what he said. Do you like Stephanie Seymour? Stephanie Seymour? I don't even know Stephanie Seymour. She was playing in one of your videos. Well, oh, she's Axel's girlfriend yeah. at the time. I don't really like her or dislike her. She's useless. <laughs> okay. I don't care about it. So shortly after her breakup with Axel Rose, Seymour began dating billionaire Peter Brandt, who is married and a father of five children. So Brandt made his fortunes in publishing. He's also a real estate developer and an art collector. So she gave birth to the couple's first son, Peter II, in December of 1993. And in 1995, Seymour and Brandt married in Paris, France. Now, one reminder of Stephanie Seymour that Axel Rose has always had in his life since 1991 was Beta Labias, who was uh, Stephanie Seymour's nanny starting back in 1991. So after 1993, when they broke up, Axel asked uh, Beta to work with them, and she served as Axel Rose's assistant for a number of years before her family became the managers for Axel Rose and Guns N' Roses back in the early 2010s. So Axel hasn't spoken too much about Stephanie Seymour since 1993. Her name has come up in a couple of interviews. So in one of Axel's first written interviews in almost five years or so, he did an interview with Rolling Stone back in late 99, early 2000, and Stephanie Seymour's name got brought up. So the article says, having stayed publicly silent so long, Rose appears to view the album as a final offering up of his side of all his battles, notably with his estranged bandmates and even more painful with his one-time fiance, supermodel Stephanie Seymour, with whom he had an ugly split. He speaks of his desire for Seymour's son to someday be able to come across the new record. I hope you'll hear it when he grows up. If he ever wants to know the story, to hear the truth, Rose says it. So if you guys ever saw the Making of Estranged video, Axel talks in some detail about getting really close with Stephanie Seymour's first son, Dylan, who was probably one to three at the time that her and Axel were dating. And having broken up with Stephanie Seymour, of course, he didn't have that relationship with Dylan anymore. So in 2014, Stephanie Seymour gave an interview to Bizarre Magazine, where she, for at least for the first time I've been able to find, talked about her relationship with Axel Rose. And she was doing a photo shoot for Bizarre Magazine as well, and the song November Rain came on the radio. And during the actual shoot, Stephanie Seymour just rolled her eyes, and she said, is this a practical joke? She recalled that she styled herself in those videos and wouldn't mind getting that dress back. She said, getting involved with Axl Rose, clearly a mistake, she says. It taught me a lot, though. He was a violent person, and I realized I never wanted to be around that again. The thrill of the whole rock and roll thing wore off. I saw the worst of the world, and it soured me. So in 2009, Stephanie Seymour filed for divorce from Peter Brandt after 14 years of marriage. And then they ended up reconciling in 2010. So there was a lot of stuff that came out about their divorce and how nasty it was getting. So here's a news clip discussing their divorce when the news first broke. She's the sexy supermodel who walked the runway for Victoria's Secret and dated some of the biggest stars in rock and roll, like Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses. 
He's the powerful media mogul worth a half billion dollars. The romance between Stephanie Seymour and Peter Brandt was a match made in Hollywood. But the fairy tale appears to be so over in what's turned into an explosive divorce battle. He's accused her of alcohol and drug use, cheating, and wild spending sprees, charging as much as a quarter of a million dollars a month. She says he changed the locks on their home and hired a nanny to spy on her. Up for grabs is a huge fortune that includes properties in Greenwich, the Hamptons, and Palm Beach, an artwork worth millions. One statue alone costs $75,000 a year just to maintain. The case is ripe for publicity. It's it's a melodrama on in real life. But their biggest fight when the pair faces off in divorced court this morning is over their three children. Experts say high-profile divorces are becoming more frequent and public. Ex-couples like Christy Brinkley and Peter Cook, Denise Richards and Charlie Sheen would rather air their dirty laundry than settle, even when it involves children. But of course, it's always better when people try to resolve custody disputes amongst themselves before we resort to the courts. Not because it's public and it's, uh, you know, salacious, but because if you let someone else decide what's going to go on uh, with your children, it may not indeed be what you want. What's complicating this case is that Seymour didn't sign a prenuptial agreement. The attorneys had no comment in this case, citing a gag order, but George sources tell us that there could be some something major happening in court today that yeah, will shake up this divorce. A lot of rumblings out there. Meantime, though, you talk about War of the Roses, the details here are stunning. They really are. I mean, it, reportedly she had taken furniture from their Palm Beach house and had it moved, was trying to have it moved to her rental in Connecticut. Uh, Peter Brandt heard about this, was not happy, had a moving, had the moving truck intercepted on I-95, had it turned around <laughs> to go back to the Palm Beach house. So it's, it's almost like a movie, some of these details. There's a man with a it also came out that uh, Stephanie Seymour claimed that basically her ex-husband Brandt had harassed and intimidated their three children ages 5, 13, and 15 and told both domestic staff and their youngest children, daughter, school uh, not to let her near the kids. And for his part, Brandt alleged that Seymour took the children to San Diego where she had family and then jetted off to Vegas to see a male friend. Brandt is also apparently the kind of guy to have commissioned a bust of his wife from the artist Marizo Catalan that viewers likened to hunti hunting trophies. So the two each continue to reside in their Connecticut estate, which in addition to Brandt's polo team and prize ponies, has several houses, which cost about half a million dollars a month in maintenance. So, and this has caused problems. Seymour says a security guard in Brandt's employee basically assaulted her and that the guard has filed a countersuit saying that Seymour assaulted him. And everyone is fighting over their expensive art collection as well. Now, also following this uh, news, about a year later, it was revealed that the couple had reconciled and had decided not to proceed with the divorce. What brought Stephanie Seymour and her husband Peter Brandt back together? According to an article on the Daily Beast, it may have been money and Brandt's hatred of losing. So for a year and a half, they were basically slinging it out in court and uh, she accused him of being controlling and cheating on her with prostitutes. And even their friend Donald Trump had a comment on their reconciliation, simply saying, I'm very happy for the both of them. So uh, Bob Colicello, who is a special correspondent for Vanity Fair, says, I'm really happy they got back together. It's a little bit mystifying, but then are so are most relationships unless you're in them. So privately, however, several sources close to the couple point to an absence of a prenup and prospect, and prospect of a lengthy public trial. It was going to be so expensive, says another friend of the couple's. I think Peter looked at the situation and saw that it was far more attractive life to stay together than to break up. And Peter loves his children and he wants them to grow up in a harmonious environment. It's more than just love, it's a family. And maybe they've decided to be more European about this, says one pal. Now, things wouldn't stay roses for Stephanie Seymour for very long. In fact, in early 2016, when we had the news of the Guns N' Roses reunion, it seemed like everything was going great for Axel and things weren't going so great for his ex, Stephanie Seymour. So in January of 2016, she was arrested and charged with a DUI after her Range Rover allegedly rolled backwards down a hill into a white Mercedes. So police responding to the scene said she smelled of alcohol, had bloodshot eyes, and had basically took seven tries to find her ID in her bag. An investigation by the police later determined that she also hit and knocked over a telephone pole the same night before fleeing the scene. In the end, she would go to court and the judge agreed to basically drop the charges against her. Now, she wouldn't have the charges dropped without conditions. The conditions were that she'd have to enter AA as well as uh, pay restitution for any of the damage that she caused as well. And most recently in 2017, Seymour co-founded and launched the lingerie line Raven and Sparrow. 
and the line features high-end vintage inspired pieces designed for comfort ranging from camisoles to rompers to silk robes and nightgowns it's available exclusively at barney's new york so that basically does what stephanie seymour has been up to lately since leaving axel rose back in 1993 let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. It seems like a lot of people like these videos about Stephanie Seymour. People have asked me to make more of them. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Any other stories you'd like me to cover. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe for all things related to Guns N' Roses. Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs>